Hey everybody. This morning I'm in the port city of Southampton and I'm taking a two day trip to the Isle of Wight. Now, if you've never heard of the Isle of Wight or you've never been, come along with me and I'll show you what this little island off the south coast of the UK is all about. Let's go. So yes, the Isle of Wight rhymes with pile of shite. No, 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 let's not start like that. Although in truth, people from the mainland do love to take the piss out of the Isle of Wight. But I'm here to dispel that myth because the island is actually a lovely place. Let's give you some quick facts about the Isle of Wight so you can get your bearings. The island's about 150 square miles in size and it's home to about 140,000 people. Locals tend to just refer to it as the island, which is kind of unfair, other islands are available. But the Isle of Wight's been split off from the UK mainland since the last ice age. And these days, a couple of miles of sea separate it from the UK mainland. And as you can see from the map, it's not far from two of the biggest cities on the south coast of the UK, Southampton and Portsmouth. Today I'm travelling from Southampton, but you can get to the island um, from three places, either from Southampton, from Portsmouth or from the town of Lymington in the New Forest. While we're en route, a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I've got lots of adventures coming up, more trips happening uh, in Europe, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be the first to know when I post new content on YouTube. Let me explain quickly where I am and the reason for my visit. So this isn't really a photography trip at all. It's actually my dad's birthday tomorrow. So I'm actually at my parents' house uh, and they live on the south side of the Isle of Wight in a place called Bonchurch, uh, which is right next to a town called Ventnor. I was hoping to be able to bring you a beautiful sea view, but it's foggy as hell. We've got sea fogs rolled in. Uh, the sea is right there. Um, you can hear probably the waves, but I can't show you any of it. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping this is going to clear up in a little bit. What I'm going to do, I think, is take a walk down to the beach just as the sun gets a bit lower. Hopefully this fog might shift, although there's hardly any wind. So um, I don't think it's going to shift anywhere very fast. But I think that's what we'll uh, head down to the beach in a little bit um, and we'll attempt some, uh, some shots there. So uh, I'll bring you along for that and I'll see you in a bit. So we've made it down to uh, the beach here at Bonchurch and as you can see the fog has cleared a little bit, the visibility is better than it was earlier on, but I'm still not really feeling a big wide shot, um, there just isn't anything uh, to work as a background here. So I've been looking around for compositions that are a little bit more intimate, uh, smaller details. And I found something really interesting here. Uh, let me spin the camera around uh, and I'll show you what we've got. So here's the composition that I've found. Um, and uh, there's just a really nice little outflow of water um, between a large set of rocks. Um, there's just a little uh, intimate scene uh, that I can shoot with lots of lovely uh, textures of water, textures of seaweed, um, just natural colours. So. I've just been experimenting with this uh, with various different filters on the camera just trying to work out primarily what the best shutter speed is to catch this water and just give it the right sort of consistency um, so I've been trying a few different things with that uh, and I'll post up now the best of the results from that I ended up shooting this little scene three different ways because the light was improving quite rapidly all the time so in this first composition I've used the three uh, light coloured rocks uh, to balance the left hand side of the composition. Originally I zoomed in a little further but with all the rocks on the right and the gravel on the left uh, it didn't really work so I've just pulled it back a little bit. You don't see the water perhaps quite so well um, but I really needed those two 
uh, light colored rocks on the left hand side to point the viewer's eye back into the center of the frame uh, and keep balance to this composition. The second composition is uh, at a 90 degree angle from the previous one. Um, and I just noticed the uh, light as it was strengthening, catching uh, those uh, rocks in the top left hand corner. Um, and I got really, really low down. I don't think I even used a tripod for this shot. I think I actually had the camera uh, just resting on the ground. Um, but this gave me a chance to get much closer to the water and show uh, the flow of that water a little bit better than I could in the first frame. And I've also included those uh, a little bit of those houses in the top right of the frame, which might seem unusual, um, but I actually quite like it. It gives uh, it gives this scene a little bit of scale that it otherwise wouldn't have. As the uh, warm evening light really improved, uh, I felt I could. Uh, uh, move back a little bit uh, and go for a slightly wider shot that included uh, some rocks that were further in the distance and extending out into the sea. So there's just a lovely light in this third image catching uh, the rocks sort of in the mid ground uh, on the right and then just in those rocks in the far back left corner of the shot. Uh, and the rocks are all quite nicely aligned. It's one of those funny images where there isn't really a strong leading line um, but there's definitely a sense of uh, the eye moving through the image in the right sort of way without getting uh, too distracted. So I think that might be a wrap for today. I'm just going to walk back along and see if I can uh, catch any last compositions on my way back. But that's um, a pretty, been a pretty nice uh, first uh, evening down here at Bonchurch Beach. And uh, tomorrow we're going to go out and explore uh, some other locations around the southern and western part of the Isle of Wight. So look forward to that. See you then. I did get one final composition as I was walking back along uh, the revetment uh, and these sea defences run all the way from Bonchurch all the way back to Ventnor and, and there's just some lovely textures uh, in this image uh, of stone, uh, bright green uh, seaweed that's been left behind by the retreating tide. Uh, so this was a nice little shot just to finish off the day. Morning everybody, welcome to day two on the Isle of Wight. We've got a uh, nice conditions today. It's nice and warm, a little bit of a breeze, but uh, I can show you a bit more of that sea view now. The weather's cleared, all that sea fog from yesterday long gone. I feel I should offer one or two travel tips about the Isle of Wight because um, it can be an expensive place to get to. Um, I did the crossing yesterday on the Red Jet Catamaran from Southampton, um, which for uh, a return ticket coming back uh, after three days was £30. Uh, so that's pretty reasonable um, but of course uh, I was coming as a foot passenger so um, I had the luxury of being picked up um, on the other side and not needing a car. Um, if you want to bring a car to the island you can, there are car ferries that come over but in high season um, and it's just coming up to Easter here or during the uh, summer holidays then the prices can get really really steep. You can pay uh, well in excess of £150 uh, just to bring a car over to the island to allow you to travel about. So. The Isle of Wight is somewhere that it's definitely worth coming to visit, but it is worth uh, coming a little bit out of season, uh, both for how busy the island gets, the roads here are, are small, uh, there are no motorways on the Isle of Wight, um, so it's all fairly small, narrow roads, they get choked with traffic, especially when some of the bigger events are on, uh, like the famous Cows Week uh, sailing regatta, or the Isle of Wight Music Festival, which is really big. Um, so those are times, if you're coming uh, to the Isle of Wight and you want to just do some photography and you want a peaceful, um, trip, those are definitely windows to avoid. So I would say that planning your timing is critical. Come when it's not too busy, come a little bit out of season. But if you're coming to the Isle of Wight, I really recommend the southwest corner. It's really the quietest part of the Isle of Wight. A lot of people tend to stick to um, the north, the east and the south coasts of the island where there's a lot more accommodation and it's just a lot more kind of touristy. But the southwestern corner is really the wild part of the Isle of Wight. Um, some of the scenery is there is the most spectacular. Uh, there's just less people around, uh, less built up areas, uh, and you can really get some spectacular views along the coast, both east and west. Uh, and so there's lots to see. So this is a real playground. If you're into landscape photography uh, or just wilder photography, then the southwest corner of the Isle of Wight is where you want to be. So the plan for today, 
is to head over to the very southwest corner of the Isle of Wight, uh, from where we are here in Bonchurch, uh, the area known as West White. And the place we're heading to first is Totland, uh, which is just to the south of Yarmouth and pretty close to one of the Isle of Wight's most famous landmarks, the Needles. And then we'll come back along the south coast of the Isle of Wight uh, this afternoon and I want to try and stop off at a place called Compton Bay, which is uh, one of the most spectacular beaches on the Isle of Wight. It's got some big cliffs in the background and there's often uh, surfers there. It's a really popular surfing spot on the Isle of Wight. So um, maybe this will be a bit more landscape photography. Maybe it'll be slightly more travel type photography. Um, we'll just roll with whatever we find uh, and go from there. So let's head on out uh, and I'll take some shots and take some footage as we go and show you a little bit more about this beautiful southwest corner of the Isle of Wight. See you in a bit. When we arrived at Totland, the first order of business was a spot of lunch to celebrate my dad's birthday. I can highly recommend the waterfront bar and restaurant, they have great sea views. It must be a brilliant place to eat at sunset as it faces west across the sea. We enjoyed some excellent local seafood and a cheeky beer. Taking a stroll along the seafront afterwards, I noticed an old crumbling pier which I thought might make an interesting photograph. It's the sort of high contrast subject with simple lines that you can shoot an interesting image of, even in harsh middle of the day light. I set up the 10 stop filter on my 16 to 35 lens so I could smooth out the sea and this was the result. We've just pulled into a park here at Afton Down, uh, which is just outside Freshwater, and it gives a fantastic view looking east along uh, Compton Bay. And I just spotted as we were driving by a really good um, perspective from high on the cliff to allow me to get a shot straight down the beach with, as the sun's moving over towards the west, uh, the light's not too bad. So I'm just gonna hop over the road um, and see if I can grab a nice shot uh, from up high looking down the beach before we go and investigate uh, the beach itself. I assumed walking up to this spot that I was gonna be using my 70 to 200 lens, but then I found an unexpected foreground element of these beautiful flowers. I'm a bit gutted about this first uh, composition because these flowers were so lovely, uh, such a perfect foreground element to put uh, in this scene, but it's kind of spoilt by the barbed wire fence uh, behind it because that's just not the sort of element that I really wanted in this image. And I could live with it uh, if it wasn't for the fact that on the right hand side of the frame, uh, the barbed wire actually uh, cuts over above the uh, cliff edge and actually clips across the sea. Uh, that's a real no-no for me. That's a kind of spoiler. Uh, it just stops this uh, photo being a great one. This image, uh, which I shot with the uh, telephoto, is probably what I had in my mind's eye in that split second when I first saw the scene. Uh, there's fantastic repeating patterns and shapes uh, in the sand and in the water all the way up through the frame. And I ended up with a square crop purely because uh, there was very little interest in the sky. Uh, so I've really kept this all about uh, the shape of the beach uh, and not uh, made it a taller image, including more sky.
Hey everybody, so this is Compton Bay. Um, and as you can see behind me, there's a very good reason why I like this beach so much. Uh, it's not exactly the ideal time of day. It's mid afternoon um, and I'm looking to the, w to the westward and towards where the sun is starting to move uh, too low in the sky. But you can see the potential here. Um, you've got huge uh, chalk cliffs and the tide's out at the moment uh, so that you can see that when it is, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, rocks uh, in the low tide, lots of really interesting rock textures that are revealed. So uh, I'm not really here at the right time of day to do this massive justice, um, but it's certainly uh, one of my favourite places to come and photograph at the Isle of, in the Isle of Wight. And if you get the chance to come down here uh, when the light's right, then it's really a very special place. This last image of the trip might be a bit of a middle of the day shot, but I kind of like it for a couple of different reasons. First of all, shooting this in the middle of the day means that um, I get to include this nice contextual element of the families uh, enjoying the beach and people actually being there. If I'd come down and shot this at seven o'clock in the morning, um, it might work as a better pure landscape image. But in terms of this being more of a travel image and showing how people enjoy this area, uh, then that's quite a welcome element to this particular picture. One of the other inescapable facts about the Isle of Wight that this photo shows quite nicely is how it is continually eroding into the sea. You can see that in the cliffs to the right of the image as to uh, how much is weathering away. But I like the additional element of the crack in the cliff top right in the foreground of the shot. A, I think that helps that little bit of foreground uh, just have a little bit of def definition because uh, the coloration is so similar that you might otherwise lose what is cliff top with what is beach below. Um, so it just helps that those two elements of the picture um, stay separated a little bit. But it does also hint um, that every single bit of this island is crumbling away slowly but surely. So I'm back in Bond Church now. It's a beautiful morning, but my time on the Isle of Wight um, is at an end. I have to head back to the mainland this morning. Uh, and of course, this wasn't really a photography trip at all. This was uh, primarily family time. Um, so it's been nice to just spend a little bit of time not worrying about photography and just being with uh, family uh, and enjoying that. So I'll sign off here. I've got to go catch my ferry and I will see you guys on the next video. In the meantime, take care. Go safe.